Good morning and welcome to Build. And here we are uh, in 2025, building out this open agentic web uh, at scale. And we're going from these few apps with you know, vertically integrated stacks to more of a platform that enables this open, scalable, agentic web. More importantly, you know, it's all about expanding that opportunity for developers across every layer. Uh, we have a bunch of new updates we are rolling out at Bill, starting with Visual Studio. It is the most powerful IDE for .NET and C++, uh, make, and we're making it even better, right? .NET 10 support, a uh, live preview at design time, improvements to Git tooling, a new debugger for cross-platform apps, and much, much more. And when it comes to VS Code, just a couple of weeks ago, we shipped we shipped a hundredth release in the open. It included improved multi-window support and made it easier to view stage directly from within the editor. And GitHub continues to be the home for developers. GitHub Enterprise has tremendous momentum in, in the enterprise. And we're doubling down for developers building any applications Trust, security, compliance, auditability, data residency are even more critical today. As GitHub Copilot has evolved inside VS Code, AI has become so central to how we code. And that's why we're open sourcing Copilot in VS Code. We're really excited about this. <laughs> Starting today, we will integrate these AI-powered capabilities directly into the core of VS Code, bringing them into the same open source repo that powers the most, world's most loved uh, dev tool. In fact, we're building app modernization right into agent mode, right? So Copilot now is capable of upgrading frameworks like a Java 8 to 20, Java 21, or .NET 6 to dot, .NET 9, and migrate any on-premise app to the cloud. And the next thing we're introducing is an autonomous agent for site reliability engineering, or SRE. The SRE agent starts automatically triaging, root causing, mitigating the issue, and then it logs the incident management report as a GitHub issue with all the repair items. Uh, and from there, you can even assign the repair items uh, to GitHub Copilot. A full coding agent built right into GitHub taking Copilot from being a pair programmer to a peer programmer. You can assign issues to Copilot, bug fixes, new features, code maintenance, and it'll complete these tasks auto autonomously. And today, I'm super excited that it's now available to all of you. I don't think since Teams launched, we've had an update of uh, this uh, level, and it really brings together chat, search, notebooks, create, and agents all into this one scaffolding that's intuitive, uh, right? I always say this is the UI for AI. Uh, and chat, for example, is grounded both on web data as well as your work data, and that's the game changer, with, especially with pages. Uh, search works across all of your applications, right? Whether it's Confluence or Google Drive or Jira or ServiceNow, not just M365 data. Uh, with notebooks, I can now create these heterogeneous collections of data, right? In fact, I can have chats and pages and any documents, emails, all in that collection. Um, and then, in fact, I can get all these audio reviews or podcasts out of it. Um, you know, I can cr use create, you know, to turn a PowerPoint into a new explainer video or generate an image. Um, and when it comes to agents, we have a couple of special agents, like Researcher, right? It's been perhaps the biggest game changer for me because it's synthesizing across both the web and enterprise sources, right? Applying deep chain of thought reasoning to any topic or any project. Uh, analyst goes from raw data across multiple source files. I can just upload a bunch of Excel files. It will get, get the insights, it'll do forecasts, it'll do all the visualizations. All of the agents you build can now show up in Teams and in Copilot, and you can ask questions, assign action items, 
or kick off a workflow by just at mentioning an agent in a chat or meeting. And with the Teams AI library, building multiplayer agents is easier than ever. It now supports MCP, and with just one line of code, you can even have it enable A to A. Uh, and you can add you know, things like episodic or uh, semantic memory by using Azure Search and a new retrieval system, which I'll talk about later. And as a developer, you can now publish. And this is the biggest thing, right? Now you can t build an agent, you can publish your agent to the agent store, and have them discovered and distributed across both Copilot and Teams, providing you access to the hundreds of millions of users and unlocking that opportunity. Today, we are introducing a new class of enterprise-grade agents you can build using models fine-tuned on your company's data, workflows, and style. We call it Copilot Tuning. You know, Copilot can now learn your company's unique tone uh, and language, and soon it'll even go further understanding all of the company's specific expertise and knowledge. All you need to do is seed the training environment with a small set of references and kick off a training run. The customized model inherits the permissions of all the source control, uh, and once integrated into the agent, it can deploy to authorized users. Our new model router will automatically choose the best OpenAI model for the job, no more sort of those you know, manual model selections. Uh, an approach today, though, goes from having apps that you built or agents you build only bind to one model to truly becoming multi-model. Uh, that's why today we are thrilled to announce Grok from XAI is coming to Azure. So when you have multiple models, what you need is a new capability in how you use these models. And now you can provision throughput once on Foundry, and you can across you can use all that provision throughput across multiple models, including Grok, right? That's just a game changer in terms of how you think about uh, models and model provisioning. And the Foundry agent service lets you build declarative agents, in fact, just with a few lines of code just on the por in the portal. Uh, for complex workflows, it supports multi-agent orchestration. Uh, and I'm excited to share that now the agent service is generally available. And we're making it straightforward, for example, for you to connect Foundry to your container app or functions uh, and deploy any open source model into AKS, uh, whether it's in the cloud or in hybrid mode with R. And you can now take a model, uh, fine tune it in, uh, or post train it uh, in Foundry, and then drop it right into Copilot Studio so that you can now use that post train model to automate a workflow or build an agent. Uh, this healthcare agent orchestrator that Stanford used is now available to everyone in Foundry. It's pretty awesome. You know, we now have new observability features coming to Foundry to help you monitor and manage AI in production. Uh, you can track the impact, quality, safety, as well as cost all in one place. Uh, with Entra ID, agents now get their own identity permissions, policies, access controls. Uh, the agents you build in Foundry and Copilot Studio show up automatically in an agent directory in Entra. Uh, we're also partnering with ServiceNow and Workday to bring automated provisioning and, and management to their agents via Entra. And when it comes to uh, data governance, Purview now integrates with Foundry, right? So when you write an agent automatically because of Purview, you can ensure end-to-end -end data protection, another massive safety consideration. Uh, and on the security side, uh, Defender now integrates with Foundry. So that means uh, your agents are also protected just like an endpoint would be from threats like wallet abuse or credential theft by, by a defender. Now, we want to bring the power of this app server and app building capability to the edge and clients as well with Foundry Local, uh, which we are announcing today. You know, it includes a fast, high-performance runtime, models, agents as a service, uh, and a CLI for local app development. And yes, it's fully supported on Windows and the Mac. 
And we're excited to announce the Windows AI Foundry. You know, Windows AI Foundry is what uh, we used, in fact, ourselves internally to build features, TK. And now we're extending this platform to support the full dev life cycle, right? Not just on Copilot PCs, but across CPUs, GPUs, NPUs, all and in the cloud, right? So you can build your application and have them run across all of that silicon. And Foundry Local is built into Windows AI Foundry, so you can tap into this rich catalog of these pre-optimized open source models that you can run locally on your device. We're announcing native support for MCP in Windows. Windows will now include several built-in MCP servers, like file systems, settings, app actions, as well as windowing. Uh, and we are adding native MCP registry that lets MCP compatible uh, clients uh, discover the secure MCP servers that have been vetted by us for security performance, all while keeping you in control. We first announced uh, Bash on Ubuntu on Windows nearly 10 years ago. Uh, it subsequently became what we obviously call you know, today WSL. Because today we are making WSL fully open source. And so we're announcing today, and you all should go check out the code in the GitHub repo, uh, NL Web. It is a way for anyone who has a website or an API already to very easily make their website or their API uh, an agentic application. We're in integrating Cosmos DB directly into Foundry. So that means any agent can store uh, and retrieve things like conversational history, um, and soon they'll be able to do, uh, also use Cosmos for all their RAG application uh, needs. Uh, and we're taking it further uh, with Azure Databricks, uh, connecting your data in Genie Spaces or in AI functions to Foundry. Uh, the other very cool capability is now inside of a PostgreSQL query, you can have LLM directly, you know, LLM re responses directly integrated. Uh, we're bringing Cosmos DB to Fabric 2, right? Because AI apps need more than just structured data. Uh, they need semi-structured data, whether it's text, images, audio. And with Cosmos and Fabric and your data instantly available alongside SQL, uh, you can now unify your entire data estate and make it ready uh, for AI. And uh, there's a lot more. In fact, we are even building our digital twin uh, builder right into Fabric. Uh, now you can you know, very easily take digital twins with no code, low code. Uh, as you can see here, you can map the data from your physical assets and systems super fast. Uh, we're also announcing you know, shortcut transformations in one lake. You can think of this as AI-driven uh, ETL. You can apply all these pre-built AI power transformations, you know, audio to text or sentiment analysis when it's data is coming in, summarization, uh, all powered by Foundry straight into Fabric. So in fact, the largest GB200-based supercomputer is going to be Azure. And so we're very, very excited about scaling this um, and making it available to all of you as developers. We are bringing together the entire stack I talked about today um, and saying, look, let's apply it to science and the scientific workflow, the scientific process. Uh, that's our ambition with Microsoft Discovery, which we are announcing today. It understands the nuanced knowledge in the scientific domain, right, from public domain as well as your own data if you're a biopharma company, discoveries built on Foundry bringing advanced agents uh, highly specialized in R&D, not just for reasoning but for conducting research itself. It's great to see how companies across every industry are already using uh, discovery to accelerate their R&D, and I can't wait to see this in the hands of more R&D labs all over uh, and what they can do. So that was you know, a quick, comprehensive, whatever you want to call it, walk uh, through the full stack and how we're creating new opportunity for you across the agentic web. Uh, we're, talking, we're taking really a, a systems approach, a platform approach, which you can expect from Microsoft across every layer uh, of the stack.